What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is my birthday, so I'm not going to be giving you guys a battle. I want to do something a little bit more different. It's not that it's something too novel, uh, but I wanted to make a tier list of my opinions about like what's the best uh, Pokemon in the uh, Isle of Armor VGC format, essentially Series 5. Uh, so today we're going to be going over that, and I brought back the face cam because you guys were like, Marcos, Where's the face cam? I did it for one video and then I like didn't do it again. So face cam is back for today, guys. Uh, so yeah, if you guys enjoy the same point in time, leave a like, subscribe, uh, turn on notifications. In fact, your birthday present to me, turn on notifications, join my Discord. If you want to support me financially, buy the t-shirts you see in the video below. Uh, however, today is my birthday, so we will, we will be putting on my birthday hat. The perks of being Mexican. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I want to, here's the thing. I, I've made a couple of tiers. We have S tier, we have A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, and good in my opinion, but only on particular builds. Now that is a particular tier that will be reserved for Pokemon that are good in my opinion, but only on particular builds. Um, and basically that's like, I'll, I'll spoil one right now, Thievil. Thievil in my opinion is a, is a decent Pokemon. It's good enough. It's not S tier because it's not as splashable as S tiers are. Uh, however, it's not. It doesn't really necessarily fit into another tier because its its niche is so particular on one particular build that it's probably unrankable in any other way. It's like it works on on this. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, uh, of course, each Pokemon. It, it's not like a fighting game tier list where each fighter is able to just be good or bad in a way like hey it has the best matchups versus this many things pokemon by design have good and bad matchups uh and they are meant to fulfill specific roles within teams so essentially this tier list will be determining how good they are at their particular job and if they fit onto a lot of teams that's kind of how i'm gonna rank them but yeah let's go ahead and get into it um let me think here. So we're starting off with Gigantamax Venusaur. I would say Gigantamax Venusaur is probably, it's it's like somewhere between A tier and B tier. I want to put it A tier, but I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to put it A tier. The reason I'm putting it in A tier is because these Gigantamax moves that set field hazards for like the entirety of a match, essentially, like, I, don't, I forget how many turns it is, like five or six, but just that many turns of taking one sixth of your health, um, being able to protect to stall out one sixth of your opponent's health is kind of a huge thing. It's almost like a, a free sticky barb in a way. Sticky barb is actually a really interesting item, but it's not great. So um, it, it's it's interesting uh, to say the least. And the thing is Gigantamax Venusaur, unlike Gigantamax Charizard, uh, it's able to fit onto these teams and have type synergy where uh, to run Charizard effectively, you'd have to have either a Whimsicott, which granted is better for the type synergy because you can set up the sun, uh, or you can have Auto Sun with Torkoal. Uh, and by setting up and by using Auto Sun with Torkoal, um, it's actually not as syner is that a word synergistic <laughs> as uh, the other option in Venusaur because uh, you're both weak to a lot of the same typings. In fact, I think all of the same typings except Torkoal isn't weak to uh, Electric and isn't as weak to um, as weak to Rock. Or actually, I guess Charizard does have the ground immunity, but that doesn't go as far when Rock is so common with Tyranitar running around. Next up is regular Charizard. I I'm or er, Charizard. <laughs> this is a Charizard people. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it... Mm, it, it used to be A tier. It used to be A tier. I feel that it still remains in A tier, um, but it's it's sort of coming down to B tier because Amoongus kind of does its job better, but you won't find a better fast sleep Pokemon. It's it's a slow sleep Pokemon that outranks it in its job if you just purely allocate it to sleep. But um, past that, I would say that it's actually just it's still a good fast sleep Pokemon, even though it's not as reliable. Uh, it has the option to be offensive, and yeah, Charizard. I'm going to go ahead and put these two, or I mean regular Charizard, if you're, yeah, they're still good. Um, regular Charizard is still threatening. Uh, I think I want to put them in B tier though. If, if I'm putting Gigantamax Charizard in A tier, then regular Charizard has to be B tier because they both get solar power. The only difference is Charizard sets up those hazards in the field, you know? Um, and he doesn't have like the utility that Venusaur has. Like it's Charizard is just going to be pure offense if you Dynamax it. Um, and it's it's objectively worse than its Gigantamax counterpart. I will I will put it that way. Blastoise, I haven't seen too much of, but I feel like 
Gigantamax Blastoise is a solid B tier, while it does still have like those field effects where it's uh, terrifying to face, because you're not going to have like more than one water type on most teams. You're going to be taking one... I'm going to take this hat off. It was it was fun while it lasted. Happy birthday, me. <laughs> um, it's um, able to set up these field hazards in the same way that um, Charizard and Venusaur are, and I guess Colossal. However, um, it's objectively worse than the two because it only fulfills a niche as sort of a mediocre fast special attacker and a lot of people will attempt to go with like a choice scarf build uh for water spout or maybe a shell smash build but the fact that it has to run one of those two items to get most of its damage output prior to dynamaxing uh, is kind of bad where gigantamax blastoise sort of suffers those same issues because you would have to go for that shell smash in order to be scary um, and while you could have rain on, on the field, it isn't as scary as Charizard uh, with sun on the field uh, to boost its power because Charizard gets like all those extra benefits of um, having all of its special moves increased by the sun's power with solar power, uh, where like Blastoise kind of has to shell smash or helping hand, like it has to have that support, which I don't really think it deserves A tier because of that, but it's still a solid B tier because of the fact that it's able to set up um, the water effect. So, uh, Blastoise C tier, just a fake out fast special attacker. You could shell smash, but it's probably not going to get you too far. I'm going to go ahead and put Butterf uh, Gigantamax Butterfree in C tier, as well as um, regular Butterfree. Yes, they do have Rage Powder. Yes, they do have Sleep Powder, but Venusaur sort of outranks them in the Sleep Powder department, and um, <laughs> like there, he's not as he's not as accurate because of course they have nearly accurate sleep powder, but um, he is faster and that's what matters. And uh, he's not as frail as them. And also, uh, Amoongus outranks them in the other two departments, sleep and <laughs> redirection. So it's just objectively better. Pikachu, I, I want to put in C tier. I feel like it's just as viable as these garbage Pokemon, but I'm gonna put him in D tier, just because like it. Well, actually, mm, good on particular builds. It's a it's a sleeper pick. I, I guess that's one of the few that I could put there. Um, if you support it well enough, it's scary, but it's not S tier, if that makes sense. I guess I should clarify. Sleeper slash not effective 100% of the time. Yeah, that, that's how I'm going to put it. It's like, it's it's viable on another team. Basically, Gigantamax Pikachu is interesting because it gets the lightning, it gets lightning rod now. So it's able to protect its partner, Togekiss, um, while it's able to hold the light ball and do disgusting damage while Togekiss redirects all the hits away. It effectively, by giving it lightning rod, it made its matchup versus a lot of things a lot better. Uh, because before you could run like Excadrill, Rotom Wash and delete the Togekiss with like, <laughs> with the um, Rotom Wash by uh, Dynamaxing and uh, Excadrill will be able to just go for Earthquake uh, or high horsepower. But uh, with Togekiss being able to be protected by Pikachu and vice versa, it makes it so like if the Excadrill Dynamaxes, you can redirect away the Max Quake uh, away from it. And if uh, the Rotom were to like to Dynamax, then uh, you're not really too concerned because you can EV yourself actually to live a Max Geyser, I believe, but it's it's pretty difficult. Uh, but yeah, th th that's the thing. Pikachu just got a massive buff with the Lightning Rod ability. And while I don't think it's like amazing, I think it can work on a particular team. And some people have shown that it can work in, in tournaments. So that's, that's really interesting. Uh, Alolan Raichu, I'm going to have to put probably C tier. It's got Fake Out, it's fast, it got Rising Voltage. I don't think we've seen its full potential, but yeah. Or actually, mm, I might have to move some of these guys down to D tier. <laughs> I might have to do that. You know what? Um, do I dare? I, I think I'm fine with ranking them how I've been ranking them. D is going to be like absolute worst. I feel like um, regular Raichu just, it, it does have some viability in the format. It's basically B tier is like the most average of all these Pokemon. C is considered average for some people, but I consider B to be the most average. They can work. They're good. They're good enough. Raichu has Lightning Rod, Fake Out, Nuzzle, good support Pokemon. That's about it. Um, Alolan Sand Slash, I'm going to have to put solid D tier. I just don't see Sand Offense being that good. You're also D tier. Clefable is a solid redirection Pokemon. Alolan Ninetales. I would put C tier, I want to say B tier because it's kind of average, but also Veil, vale. uh, it's it's completely outclassed by Lapras, so that's that's a thing. You're also going to be going into C tier Ninetales, like it's, or maybe even like D tier, like yeah, you could use it to set up a sun, but Torkoal does its job better, so 
I have to put it there. Your D tier, Vileplume, is just outclassed entirely by the Venusaur line. I haven't seen anything of Sandforce Dugtrio, <laughs> or Tangling Hair, Alolan Dugtrio, or even regular Dugtrio, you know. You're garbage. Let me add another tier, just solid F. I, I need to add just a solid F tier, like do not use. My bad, guys. I, I just, I didn't prepare for this many Pokemon to be bad. <laughs> I guess I should have. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. You were supposed to be green, sir. Let me add a row below. Can they do it? I'm freaking it, guys. There we go. F. Yeah, you're going into F tier. You deserve it. Um, I think Alolan Persian is kind of slept on right now. I would call it a solid B tier. It has Snarl, has Fake Out, has Foul Play. Fur Coat is great utility. It might even be C tier. It's. I'm gonna have to put it C tier actually. Like it's it's it works. Um, I think Liopard and other Pokemon kind of do its job better, uh, especially since Liopard has the Prankster ability. But just how fast and bulky it is, it, it has a lot going for it. I'm gonna have to put you in D tier. You're just like a okay Fake Out Pokemon, not much more than that. Golduck, you could be viable in Rain. Uh, Arcanine, I am going to put solid A tier. Er, mm, B tier. I mean, Incineroar kind of objectively outclasses it right now. I mean, let me think about this. So, Incineroar helps deal with Psy Spam, but Arcanine has kind of fallen off in Series 5, mainly just because, um, because of Psy Spam, because of all these different factors that, um, have made it sort of kind of worse. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm gonna keep it A tier just because it's still, it's still splashable in a way. Poliwhirl, or Poliwrath, I'm going to have to put D tier, just another mediocre rain abuser. I'm going to go ahead and put Alakazam into low B tier. I think it's a good Pokemon on Psy Spam, but I don't find it to be as splashable as um, Indeedee is for just... Like, Indeedee by itself, in my opinion, does Psy Spam well enough, if that makes sense. Like, support the Indeedee if you want to go for Psy Spam. I just don't feel like having two Psychic types helps you out that much in this format, especially when a Pokemon can just Dynamax to take the hit, you know? Uh, Machamp, Gigantamax, D tier. You're also D tier. Tentacruel, we haven't seen much of it, but I would put it probably D tier. Like, it's it's viable if you don't want to mess with a special defensive fast Pokemon. You're kind of really bad. I'm going to go ahead and put you F tier. I have not seen anything from this Pokemon. A physical fairy type doesn't work unless it's Mimikyu, in my opinion. Or, mm, I mean, the Tapus, but they didn't really run physical fairy moves. And Azumarill, like, it, it's weird. Like, they managed to make a Pokemon with access to Play Rough that doesn't do well. It's just the stats, man. You're kind of F tier. I'm gonna have to put um, the new Slowbro. I'm gonna put both of these Slowbros in C tier. They're solid Trick Room Pokemon. Uh, the Poison typing makes it halfway decent against Togekiss, which is really nice, and it's a nice defensive switch because of that. Uh, Shao Sidearm, not as reliable as I hoped it would be, because it if it worked like Photon Geyser, where it would turn... How do I say it? I, I, what I was hoping... It, that's, this isn't how Photon Geyser works. What I was hoping is that um, if your opponent's defense stat was lower, and it was calculated to do more damage because of that, then it would use your attack stat. But if you're if your attacks and the thing is like because you're you're usually running like no attack investment even if the like attack even if like the defense stat ends up being lower sometimes these pokemon are like able to just eat the hit because your attack stat isn't that high like in a way it would have been better to just hit him with the special offensive move so it's it's an unreliable move in my opinion shell sidearm but it's not a bad move i guess you can use it with max ooze it's like it's one of the few poison moves it can get that it can run reliably so i think it's fine it's just fine, that's why it's in C tier, and the Trick Room is nice, so. Farfetch'd, I'm sorry, man. Into the Shadow Realm with you. Cloyster, it could work. You know, I've seen it work in 2017, but it wasn't great. I'm gonna have to put Gigantamax Gengar. Um, the Trapping is okay. C tier, it's viable. Regular Gengar, C tier, viable. Fast Pokemon, fast offensive ghost type. Kingler, I am sorry, my friend. I thought you were good at one point. You were. You were. Or, mm. I'm not going to order them within tiers, by the way. I'm just, this is just how I'm picking them. I would put, but if I were to put Gigantamax Kingler anywhere, just because of that, that disgusting speed thing that it can do, where it can cut your speed in half with every hit. Solid high D tier, if that makes sense. Yeah. These, I mean, Alolan Executor, I would put it in D tier. 
Same with a uh, regular executor, just because Grass Psychic, it, it's okay, I suppose, but um, we have a lot of U-turn this generation, if that makes sense. Like, Dragapults are packing it, Rillabooms are packing it. Had Executor shown up early metagame, it would have been halfway decent, in my opinion, uh, because we didn't have very many good Grass types, but now it has competition with Venusaur, it has competition with Rillaboom, it's just outclassed, you know? Alola Marowak, solid B tier. Solid B tier. I'm really glad it's good in this format. I have fond memories of it in 2017. Um, Alola Marowak, if you don't know, it can hold the Thick Club, and has the option of either Lightning Rod or Rockhead. Rockhead will allow it to spam Flare Blitz with no drawbacks whatsoever, which is disgusting when you have double attack and stab Flare Blitz. Um, however, Lightning Rod is usually chosen over this because um, you're able to run uh, bulky water types under Trick Room and support them with... Um, Lightning Rod just drawing away all the attacks, which is really nice. And also, just under Trick Room, Alola Marowak's terrifying. And when you Dynamax this thing, they gave it Poltergeist now, so you don't have to use Shadow Bone. But Poltergeist uh, creates like a really powerful uh, ghost type uh, max move, which is something that you should not sleep on. Uh, unfortunately, its, counterpa its counterpart isn't very good. I'm going to put it in D tier. Hit only, D tier. It gets Fake Out. You get Fake Out. Like, if you're a halfway decent Fake Out Pokemon, I'll put you in D tier. I am going to have to put. I would put, like, Alolan, Alolan, Galarian, um, Weezing, high D tier. It has Misty Terrain, so I kind of feel like I'm forced to put it C tier, like, low, low C tier. And I suppose on a particular build, it would be okay, but also just the general utility of this Pokemon works, if that makes sense. Like, you're able to remove abilities. You have to play it very specifically. You have to be a practiced um, Galarian Weezing player, and we did see some of that early format. Someone was able to pull off a tournament win with it. However, um, yeah, I guess for that reason, I'll put it C tier. It's hard to justify in many other situations. You're D tier, man. You don't have the fairy typing. You're kind of bad. I want to put you in D tier, but I, or I want to put you in F tier, but D tier is fine since you get EVL8. Chansey, it's a sleeper pick. Evasion is disgusting. <laughs> If you don't know, in 2017, we had a, an influx of Chansey going for uh, a whole bunch of garbage strategies where you would raise your evasion as high as you could, then go for Seismic Toss, then go for Toxic, uh, and you had, like, Shuckle or Carbink being able to guard split with you to make you even more disgustingly bulky. It's it's a sleeper pick. It's good on particular builds. But maybe not so much this format, but I feel like someone's going to be able to pull it off. Halfway decent fake out Pokemon got scrappy this generation. Uh, it's not able to be intimidated, which is really cool. So, yeah, D tier. You're F tier. <laughs> not thinking twice about that. Solid D tier. Uh, it has expanding force now. Pretty fast. Okay. Evil Light user. Screen cleaner. Decent. Fake out Pokemon. Decent. I'm going to go ahead and put you in D tier. I tried you out. You're not bad enough to be F tier, in my opinion. You got dual wing beat. Scyther now has a 120 base power flying type move, which is kind of disgusting. And maybe it could work in a particular build, but I feel like um, it's just not something you should build a team around, if that makes sense, you know? It, it works. For what it wants to be, it works, but it's not amazing. Pinsir, D tier. Tauros, I want to put you F tier, but you're probably D tier. Gyarados, I will put you as a solid B tier pick right now. Uh, with Rillaboom running around, Tor uh, <laughs> with Rillaboom running around, uh, Gyarados has gotten a lot more utility in my opinion. Uh, you're able to go for Max Airstream to deal with the Rillaboom and just one shot it, and it's, it's sort of gotten better. It, it sort of fell off in like Series Four, but uh, as Series Five has rolled around, I feel like uh, Gyarados has gotten just a lot better with having more things to Max Airstream, having uh, a better reason to run a Lumberry because you're able to completely negate the sleep that you get off of, um, not Fungus, Amoongus, uh, which is really nice. So I think I think Gyarados is going to be pretty decent. You are probably A tier. You still work. You're not as good with Rillaboom around, but I want to put you B tier, but I feel like you still deserve the A tier. Like, you can't go wrong with, um, you can't go wrong with Lapras builds, in my opinion. It's pretty difficult to be awful with Lapras. And regular Lapras, it's outclassed, but it's still viable, I guess. If you're running Lapras, just run Gigantamax Lapras. But if you end up with just a regular Lapras in your team, I'd put C tier. Gets Icy Wind, gets Parish Song, it's alright. Um, Eevee, yeah, you're bad. Vaporeon, probably D tier. Jolteon, probably D tier. Flareon, probably D tier. Basically, like, if something's in D tier, man, like, it's, it's because we haven't seen much from it, but it could work. I wouldn't doubt that someone could build around it. Gigantamax... 
Gigantamax Snorlax. I would put as a solid B tier pick if you're running a Snorlax. And Snorlax can run like Yawn, Belly Drum. If we're talking about Gigantamax Snorlax's playstyle, it's it's almost never running Yawn. It's running like Belly Drum to set up. So I would probably put it B tier. It's an okay Dynamax. It works. It's threatening under Trick Room. There's a lot of ways around it, especially with a Fungus or with a Moongus around. Um, I guess a Moongus kind of messes with it. I kind of want to put it C tier because that I'll, I'll put it top of C tier, even though this isn't ordered. I, I will say it's a C tier pick. All right. Um, it's just that a Moongus rolling around made it much scarier to run a, a Snorlax build. Noctowl, not gonna doubt Wolfie. Solid D tier. I'm not gonna say it's C tier. Noctowl does not deserve C tier. Wolfie challenged himself to use Noctowl and he succeeded. But because he was able to do it, it means that it can work. Which is what D tier is for. It can work. Basically, it won't work. It can work. It has worked. And probably will continue to. It's good, it's great, it's incredible. That's that's how we're ordering this. I guess I should have said that from the beginning. I would put Lantern D tier. Uh, Zatsu, solid D tier. Blossom, D tier. Most of these Pokemon are D tier. Now, I want to put Azumarill actually as a B tier. I feel like Azumarill is kind of slept on right now. While it doesn't like Venusaur and it doesn't like Amoongus, um, with proper support and under Trick Room, it's a really threatening Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, just because it has huge power, it's able to deal massive damage. And if you do decide to Belly Drum, the ability to Belly Drum and then Dynamax, is it's terrifying. You still have the Aqua Jet pressure, but it's terrifying knowing that you can Dynamax a plus 6 Pokemon with decent bulk and an amazing attack stat. So, I like it. I like it a lot. Cito Wudo, sorry Ryan. Shout out to Ryan PB Hebert, but <laughs> D tier. Alright, uh, Politoed, I would put you as a solid... I want to put you as A tier because Kingdra is good. I don't like Kingdra. I don't find it good personally, but I know it is good. Um, if that makes sense, I'm gonna put you in probably A tier. You're the best weather setter besides Tyranitar right now. Yeah, Quagsire. I'm sorry, my friend. I am sorry. Uh, do I put you F tier? Yeah. Espeon could work. Umbreon has worked, but not frequently. Um, I feel like we haven't seen much of Slowking yet, but I, I could put it C tier in my opinion. It's just another okay Trick Room setter. Wobbuffet, F tier. Dunsparce, I'm sorry. Steelix, D tier. Quillfish, D tier. Scizor, ah, oh, man, this one hurts. This one hurts, man. I have not faced a single good Scizor because they, they really nerfed that, man. I am sorry, Scizor. I want it to be good. They got rid of its best bug stab move. Granted, they did give it dual wing beat. Fine, fine, C tier. Uh, it's able to one shot Amoongus. That's its one thing. Shuckle. Mm. Yeah, D tier. I, I almost put it F tier, but when you run it next to Chansey, like those two together are gonna be scary. You're probably D tier. Corsola. Eh, D tier. Other Corsola, probably F tier to be honest, but put you D tier. You're not as bad as like everything down there. Octillery, D tier. Deli Bird, F tier. Mantine, D tier. Skarmory, D tier. Kingdra, I will put as a solid C tier pick. I don't find it terrifying. And let me open up Picolytic so I can show you why. It does have pretty high usage, but that was only at the beginning. It sort of had new toy syndrome. But as you can see, it's sort of fallen down. It used to be like top 10. Now it's not even close to that. So yeah, it's, it's really just gonna be going for like max airstreams and stuff. Like that's it. Um, or actually, I guess you deserve B tier. I guess you deserve B tier, yeah. Porygon 2. Um, hold on, I'm putting him in C tier right now, but that's because I'm trying to move him to... It's either A or B, honestly. Personally, I want to put it in A because it's just really, really good at setting up Trick Room and being an offensive threat with, um, with the ability to use download. Uh, however, I also want to put B tier because... We have a lot of good fighting types this generation. We have Congolder, we have Terrakion, we have Cobalion, we have all these cool dudes. Uh, so I, I kind of want to throw them in B tier because it's just not quite on par with these guys. Hit him on top. I'll go ahead and throw you in C tier. Intimidate, fake out user. Not great versus fairies, but all right. You go there. You go there. Tyranitar, welcome to A tier. That is our next A tier. It's been a while. We do have a lot of fighting types, like I said. Uh, however, Tyranitar isn't a, isn't literally a sitting duck. 
Like, when we're comparing it to Porygon, Porygon loses to fighting types because it's a sitting duck, but with proper support, Tyranitar can have a partner that deals with the fighting types effectively. Uh, it, can, it functions well with Ndidi, funny enough. Uh, so you can have like a follow me user next to it and it's able to deal damage back So I would put Tyranitar in A tier just because we've seen how well it works with weakness policy We've seen how great of a Dynamax candidate it is. So yeah, it's definitely earned the A tier status Linoon, um, D tier. It's just a belly drum mount. It's, it's a belly drum on uh, Ludicolo is objectively outclassed by Kingdra, but Graham Amity kind of sold me on it. So I want to put it C tier Shift tree, uh, solid D tier Pelipper, I've seen it work, it gets wide guard, I want to put you seed tier, because you're just another rain setter, why not? Gardevoir, I want to put you in C tier, but I know that you haven't quite earned it this format. Ninjask is going to be F tier, Shed Ninja is D tier, because it, like, <laughs> there you go, there you go, you earned it, you're the next weird one. Explod, D tier. Sableye, uh, I'm gonna put C tier. It's a good support Pokemon. You get Prankster Sunny Day and stuff, so that's cool. Fake Out is nice. Snarl's okay. Will O Wisp. All right, Mawile, D tier. Manectric, uh, I want to put it C tier just because of Lightning Rod, but I know it's probably D tier. Sharpedo, uh, it could be okay. I want to put it C tier once more, but I know that it hasn't gotten results yet, so there you go. Whale Lord, you are once again there. Torkoal, I'm gonna put Torkoal in B tier. It's our best Sunsetter at the moment, and it does amazing under Trick Room. Uh, so yeah, it's just another solid Pokemon that you should probably be using. And it functions especially well at Gigantamax Venusaur, just the type synergies there. So I like that a lot. Flygon, I want to put you in C tier, but I know you're probably D tier. It's just outclassed by <laughs> literally every other dragon and a few ground types. Lunatone, D, 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 D. Milotic, I will put C tier though. Like, yes, we have Rillaboom now. Milotic used to be B or A tier. I'd say it's solid C tier right now. If you can remove a Rillaboom from the field, you can use Milotic effectively. It feels weird putting Scizor, Milotic, and all these different Pokemon in the same tier, but it, it also feels right. I don't know. I'm a strange man. Dusclops, uh, solid B tier pick. Solid B tier. It's sort of fighting with Porygon 2 for the best Trick Room setter right now. And that's mainly because Porygon 2 has reliable recovery. It doesn't have to use Paint Split or anything. And it's also an offensive threat. But Dusclops being able to frisk things on the ladder is incredible. And being able to reveal items in the Dynamax format is disgusting. Like, just because you can tell where the weakness policy is, you can tell so much information from running this Dusclops. And excuse me, I'm answering a text message. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great Pokemon. Yeah, I just like it a lot. And I feel like it's not too much of a stretch to say that it deserves that. But Fairy, I'm going to go ahead and put B tier. Another uh, solid follow me Pokemon, has the tools to support a team well, follow me, Icy Wind, Helping Hand, it's it's pretty good. You're probably D tier, you're probably D tier. Um, It's outclassed now, we used to be able to make a case for Roserade, but it's outclassed in everything now. Uh, as like a sleep powder Pokemon, Wigglytuff is only good under Trick Room, but that's on particular builds, and it's not quite... It's not quite niche as these Pokemon. It doesn't have one particular build it works with, so I'm not going to put it in D. It's just like, on certain Trick Room teams, you could make it work. Vespaquin, not very good. Chirum, not very good. Gastrodon, I'm going to put C tier. Um, basically, it just supports Pokemon like Rhyperior really well. It supports Tyranitar really well. Uh, it's nice for countering rain at the moment. Rillaboom makes it harder to use. However, um, I don't think that it's worth putting down into D tier because of that. Driftblim, eh, Tailwind, sure, you can go next to Gastrodon, Lopunny, get out of here, Skuntank, get out of here, Bronzong, you are a solid C tier pick, my friend, uh, the reason I think Bronzong is actually a really good Trick Room setter right now is because it's one of like a few Trick Room setters that you could justify running safety goggles on, you can't run safety goggles on either of the two best Trick Room setters, which are Porygon and Dusclops, because they need to run Eevee Light to be effective. Uh, but by running safety goggles on Bronzong, it makes it easier to deal with uh, Amoongus, and also it still has the tools to uh, self-proc weakness policy on particular mons. It still has uh, things like uh, Bulldoze, it gets Gyro Ball for uh, Togekiss, and it also gets Hypnosis to spam blindly and make your opponents mad. So, Lucario, uh, you're probably C tier. I don't like you very much, though. It's just a beat-up justified Pokemon. Hippowdon, probably C tier. I've seen it work. You are definitely D tier. I'm sorry, Drapion stands. 
you are probably D tier. You are definitely D tier. Weavile is definitely D tier. I'm sorry, Weavile stands. Magnezone, we haven't seen much of. I will put it in solid D tier, though. Looky, looky, solid D tier. Rhyperior, how the mighty have fallen, man. You used to be a solid B tier, and now I feel like you're C. Just because of Rillaboom. Rillaboom kind of messed you up, man. Welcome to the Rillaboom Messed Me Up Club. Uh, <laughs> population, Hippowdon, Gastrodon, Milotic, Lapras, and you. Yeah, that's that's a shame. Tangrowth, I could see working. I don't think it's going to be amazing, though. It gets Rage Powder. Put him in, uh, in C tier. No. Tokus, uh, solid S tier. Our first S tier. Put that thing on any team you want. It'll work. <laughs> it's the most... S is like for splashable and superb at the same time. You can put Tokus on most builds. It's got many sets. You could run a Babiri, Yawn set. You could run a... I'm getting a phone call. Let me answer this. That was my dad. He was like, how old are you? He was like, do you feel old yet? I'm like, yeah, about one day older than yesterday. <laughs> All right. So as I was saying, Tokus has so many sets. Crit Kiss, Safety Goggles Kiss, Babiri Kiss, everything. It's it's incredible. Weakness Policy Kiss is a sleeper in my opinion. Not not as many people are running Weakness Policy Kiss right now, which is kind of a shame, but if we go ahead and take a look at Toekiss, second most used Pokemon in the format. Scope Lens, Babiri, Safety Goggles, Razor Claw. Uh, these are the same thing. Weakness Policy, Lumberry. It, it has amazing sets. I can't sell you more on Toekiss than then like uh, the game will sell it to you itself pretty much like i can't explain how great it is you'll just know uh you are d tier you are d tier i don't want to put you in d tier because i have seen you put in massive work i will put you c tier you're oblivious you're a good ground type you're a good ice type why not you welcome to b tier my friend you are scary one of the best dynamax pokemon in the formats at the moment however not as scary as a tier or s tier um it gets messed up by Swords of Justice. I found that out myself. Um, it gets very few tools to knock out Trick Room Setters if they can eat a hit. Uh, Snarl is scary for it because of its low speed. However, it's also got the best speed control in the game, Max Strike, which is crazy. <laughs> it has the most powerful Max Strike. It's got Adaptability, Max Strike. You can run Hyper Beam to nuke things. Get like 160 base power move. It's, it's disgusting. Gallade. Sorry, my friend. You are a D tier. Dust Noir, D tier, Frostlass, D tier. The Rotom Forms, I am sorry. There are only a couple of Rotom Forms I could justify using in this format. Uh, Rotom Heat is a solid fire type, not amazing though. Rotom Mo is a solid grass type, not amazing though. Regular Rotom, I'm sorry. Welcome to D tier, I suppose. Rotom Fan, D tier. Rotom Wash, uh, I will put you as B tier. Still a great Pokemon. Didn't get messed up by Rillaboom as badly as the other ones did because it's usually on teams that can deal with it. Uh, gets Nasty Plot, has Hydro Pump, great defensive Pokemon. It only has like one weakness and that is Rillaboom, which is funny. So that's good. Moldbreaker X Girl as well, but not as relevant to the situation I'm currently in. Uh, you, I want to put you in D tier. Lyapard, I mean solid Trick Room Pokemon. If you don't know, Lyapard can set up a Trick Room by you Dynamaxing your Trick Room on, clicking uh, max guard off a of trick room and then you copycat. It's it's easy to get trick room off with that, so I'm I'm not gonna undersell it because of that. You are probably D tier. Unpheasant, definitely F tier. I'm sorry, you can only do a crit set and even then you're pretty garbage at it. Gigalith, sleeper pick. Um, however, not particular. The reason is, um, Sandforce Gigalith brought me to number 15 on the showdown ladder a few series ago, like series three, uh, and just Sandstream. Makes it very easy to sell. Solid weakness policy Pokemon, slower than Rhyperior, so it beats it uh, in a lot of situations. So that's really nice. Uh, I just find it to be a really good Pokemon. Not not amazing, though. All right. Uh, you are D tier. You pull some shenanigans. Excadrill, solid A tier? Um, It's somewhere between B and A tier. I feel like Excadrill got a little bit less relevant when rain came around however the presence of tyranitar itself makes it a bit better um we got a lot of good water types here that's the issue it's it's like high b tier low a tier in my opinion it's still a great pokemon but it's not as good as it was in the first series conkledor uh you are a solid b tier pick great on trick room amazing on lapras even though lapras is falling off with rillaboom but you know how it is Seismitoad, I don't even know why I'm scrolling up for you. Throw, you are bad. You are bad. Scolipede has potential, but only like Focus Ash Endeavor stuff. Whimsicott, welcome to A tier, my friend. You are the best Tailwind setter in the game. Even Talonflame can't. If you don't know, Talonflame can't one shot uh, Whimsicott 
with life orb 100 percent of the time basically i had to explain this to a lot of people in the comment section that are like hey man you can use town flame to beat terracott no you can't at least not 100 percent of the time life orb jolly talon flame with max attack and mind you you have to run jolly because if you run timid or because if you run adamant uh timid whimsicott will outspeed you and get up tailwind gale wings boost your um flying type moves to the same priority as tailwind and then you have an opportunity to one shot it because you outspeed so jolly life orb doesn't always one shot max hp whimsicott and they will make that adjustment so because whimsicott can take that it has not fallen off yet Talonflame is still a solid Tailwind setter, but Whimsicott just barely nudges it out now. And it still has great support with fake tears and stuff. It's an amazing Pokemon. Yeah. Alright, um, Lilligant, F tier, or B tier. Basculin, probably F tier. Crocodile, eh, C tier Pokemon. It has Intimidate. That's about it. Good, gr uh, good ground type. Darmanitan, C tier. Threat. This one, I suppose, just goes with it. <laughs> I don't find it to be all that great, but it's just an alternate form. In fact, I'll just leave it off the tier list. It doesn't need to be ranked. Throw you to the bottom. Uh, throw you to the bottom as well. You don't really need to be ranked. You're not used at all, and you're just an alternate form. Regular Darmanitan, uh, I want to put you in D tier, but I know you're probably C tier just because you're an okay fire type. Yeah. Maractus, F tier. No one even remembers you. Krussel, D tier. Scrafty, probably C tier. And D tier, it's probably the worst Intimidator, in fact. Just because it's so weak to Togekiss. Sigalith, I will put you in D tier. Uh, Kafagurgus. Probably a D tier Trick Room Setter. It gets outclassed by pretty much everything. Uh, Garbodor. I'm sorry, man. Not even Max Malador could save you. Zoroark, we haven't seen much of it. I feel like it, it could be okay, but it's probably D tier. Min uh, Minchino. D tier. Gothitelle, I will put in C tier just because trapping is such a solid tool and it gets fake out this generation, which was gross. Why would you give it fake out? I want to put Runiclus in B tier because it deals so well with Amoongus and it's a good trick room setter at this format. It's also a threat. You can run Life Orb in that thing with Magic Guard and it does disgusting damage and hides the Life Orb. Um, you are probably there. Amolga, D. The Scavalier, solid trick room Pokemon, but not higher than D tier. Amoongus, welcome to A tier, friend. You are literally the best sleep Pokemon in the format. And you get Clear Smog, you get Palm Puff, you get Rage Powder, it's incredible. You are probably C tier. Halfway decent Trick Room Setter. Um, Galvantula, D tier. Ferrothorn, B tier. We got good fire types now, but Ferrothorn is never going to be lower than B tier in this format, in my opinion. You are D tier. You are D tier. Chandelure, solid. Solid C tier Pokemon can prevent Trick Room. Good fire type. Can set up Trick Room as well, but they don't do that. Uh, you are D tier. Bear Tick, irrelevant. D tier. Aselgor, irrelevant. D tier. Bear Trap, D tier. Pancake, D tier. Yenshao, D tier. I don't have to justify a lot of these Pokemon being D tier. It's just their lack of usage and the, the frailty and scarcity of them being able to be used. So Pokemon that aren't really relevant, I will kind of speed through. Um... Yeah, Golurk, I feel like, has potential. I'll, I'll probably build around it at some point, but I'm going to put a D tier still. Bisharp, amazing now. I don't know what happened between series <laughs> between series um, 3 and 5, but I feel like what it is is we got a lot of really solid physical attackers, like um, Gigantamax, Rillaboom, and just Rillaboom in general. And now because a lot of people are running Incineroar, uh, and Intimidate is more prominent, it makes it so Bisharp being able to get Defiant Boost is really, really scary. So I'm going to go ahead and put you in C tier, my friend. Buffalant, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, bud. Braviary, I suppose you're a C tier. Not incredible, though. The most, the least, <laughs> I would call it like the least notable C tier in there. And that's a, that's a weird distinction. You're C tier, you're bulky, you get foul play, tailwind, great support. You will remain in D tier while your counterpart that you're supposed to be better than mind you, you eat these things, will probably be C tier. Maybe even B tier. Probably like high C tier. Hydreigon, I'm going to put you in C tier. We have seen you work, but you're not incredible. Volcarona, we haven't seen much of in fact, but I know that it's probably going to be C tier. It's more of a sleeper fire pick, but uh, not, once again, this is for like particular teams. You are a solid B tier pick. A lot of people are running you with Justified. Um, you are solid B tier well, mainly just because, like, it's the best rock type right now. <laughs> it's also one of the best fighting types. You can run Whimsicott next to it to be uh, justified boosted, get Tailwind up, do disgusting damage. 
Verizion, you're probably C tier. Just a decent grass type. Diggers B, I've seen you work, you're scary, you're C tier. Talonflame, I want to put you B tier, but I know you're high C tier probably. Uh, you know, I'll put you in B tier. A lot of people would kill me if I didn't. A lot of people would want to kill me. Uh, Pangoro, I will put you in D tier, just not notable. Meowstick, not too great, but I will put the Prankster, ver I'm pretty sure this is the Prankster version. I don't know if they go, if they both get Prankster. I think one gets competitive, but the one with Prankster, I'm assuming it's this one, uh, gets Prankster light screen and fake out, which is really nice. Aegislash, C tier. Aromatisse, I have seen you work. However, you're probably still D tier. Slurpuff, D tier. Apologies, my friends. You are D tier. Barbarical, D tier. Dragalgy, disgusting damage. Solid C tier pick. Clawitzer, eh, it's okay, but D tier overall. Heliosk, D tier overall. We have better fairy types than, um, than Sylveon now. However, I would still put it in C tier. Just because it's got disgusting damage output with Pixelate. Halucha, um, I want to put you in C tier just because I've seen you work. And you're not quite as bad as the other mons. So, yeah. Dedene. D tier. You are a solid C tier. Just because you're disgustingly bulky when you Dynamax. Uh, Klefki, I will put into C tier. Pending B tier. We haven't seen much of it, but I feel like it's better than Grimmsnarl. And, yeah, I feel like it's going to end up being highly used in the future. You aren't too great. You have worked in previous formats, but I don't see you working in this format. Ice table, bad, uh, F tier. <laughs> Noivern, I will put you in this tier just because you get Tailwind. And Max Airstream is pretty decent. Your D tier. Incineroar, um, I'm going to put it A tier. It would have been B tier last, last one, but uh, if we're putting Arcanine up here because of how splashable it is on many teams, I think that Incineroar also deserves it. I'm thinking about moving down Lapras, to be honest, but... Yeah, let's move down Lapras. <laughs> Lapras is a B tier. There's a... Yeah, it's a B tier. A Primarina, I will put as a solid... Mm, B tier pick. Higher than Lapras, though. Not that we're ordering it. Basically, it's just a really great Dynamax candidate. Hyper Voice uh, with Liquid Voice is really nice. Uh, Moonblast is disgusting. Life or Damage is great. Vikavolt. Probably D tier. We're going B D tier. Uh, you are D tier. You are D tier. You are D tier. You are D tier. <laughs> you are D tier. Welcome, Mudsdale. Our newest C tier. Uh, it's actually a pretty decent ground type. Stamina is cool. If you're running an excellent like, beat up Whimsicott, you can run weakness policy pretty effectively. Uh, it also gets inner focus, which means that it can't be intimidated. So that's really cool. Araquinid. Uh, we haven't seen too much of it, but I think it's still a solid C tier. Lorantis. Not too much going on with it. Um, I want to say c tier just because it's like okay under trick room but i it's, that's probably a stretch i'm sorry my friend <laughs> so lazl's probably uh, d tier beware is d tier you are d tier comfe is d tier orangaroo is d tier pisamian's d tier we have so many d tiers Golisopod, that one hurts uh sandy ghast or palisand i'm sorry i'm just apologizing to all these pokemon i like really like a lot that I just don't feel like deserve anything higher than F or D. Turtonator is another D tier pick. It could work. I'm going to put Token Mario a little bit higher. I'll put it as C tier. Gets Spiky Shield, gets Fake Out, gets Nuzzle. Decent Pokemon. Uh, it's sort of fighting with uh, Raichu as like a halfway decent electric type. In fact, I'm going to move Raichu down. They're about the same in my opinion. Yeah. Mimikyu. Uh, I'll put them C tier. Good Trick Room Pokemon. Solid next to Dragapult with a weakness policy still. Not quite B tier though. Drampa, you are D tier. Delmize, I'll pitch you C tier. Just like a solid Pokemon. You know, gets stab on steel moves, which is nice. Uh, Kamoo, I'm going to put you. You're kind of really bad right now. I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> Melmetal isn't relevant. Not legal. Uh, Gigantamax Rillaboom. Hello, A tier. Or I suppose you're S tier. Uh, mainly because Rillaboom itself is S-tier. Great Pokemon. Highest used Pokemon in the format. Sets up Grassy Terrain, gets Grassy Glide now, which if you're Gigantamax Rillaboom, you can turn Grassy Glide into a 160 base power grass type move, which can one-shot Gigantamax Lapras before it gets its screens up, which is the reason that a lot of water types ended up in B-tier here, where they would have been A-tier prior. 
Cinderace, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put you A tier. Both forms of Cinderace are good. I think the regular Cinderace is better, technically, but yeah. Um, Snipe Shot, the movie, you're probably C tier right now. Not incredible, we have better water types right now, but still a threat. You are D tier. Gigamax Corviknight. I'm going to put it next to regular Corviknight because they're about the same, to be honest. Just one can't airstream. Uh, so I'll put you B tier. Uh, you're really good at absorbing hits from the Swords of Justice and is just a solid pick overall. Or Beetle. I'm sorry, my friend. Feeble is another one that I think is a sleeper pick. Good on particular builds, but you have to definitely build around it if you want to use it. Solid D tier. Double F tier. Uh, Dreadnought, I am going to put Gigantamax in D tier and regular in C tier just because one of them can set up rain and the other one cannot. Actually, mm, never mind. I, You get really messed up by, by Rillaboom. I have to put you down here. Um, You, we haven't seen much of. I don't like you though. Colossal, I think is still an okay pick. C tier, Gigantamax Colossal. Scary Gigantamax Pokemon. And I suppose regular Colossal can go right next to it because they function about the same. Just one of them can't set up. Um, one of them can't set, can't set up the uh, Volcalith. Flapple, C tier. It works. Not great though. Uh, Appleton, I am sorry, you are going solid D tier. I've seen Santa Cana put in some work. Lost to it a few times. Bulky Ground type can trap into opponents. I think it's all right. It loses hard to Rillaboom right now, but that's, you know, that's what most things in C tier do. You're probably D tier. <laughs> Barrascuta, I will put as a solid C tier. Fast offensive Pokemon. Uh, and it's, you know, it's kind of a good, it, I wouldn't call it the best Dynamax option, but it's scary. I'll give it that. Toxtricity, um, I will put you in C tier. All of you are in C tier. You're literally the same thing pretty much. Just one of you gets a different move. Um... Being able to set up status is okay. You know, it sort of falls within this mediocre but not terrible category. I think you were pretty bad, actually. Uh, Gigantamax Send of Scorch and regular Send of Scorch, just that rock weakness really takes him down. And Fire, while it is a really good offensive move, um, Fire Spin just doesn't justify having this as your Gigantamax Pokemon, you know? F tier for you, you have no use. I am sorry, friend. You could work. Hatterene. Gigantamax Hatterene. I want to put him B tier, but I know that um, the introduction of, like, actually, mm, I'll put you B tier. I think it's still a great Pokemon. Not as good as it was before, but it's it's still B tier. Like, the, the magic bounce is great. The uh, ability to set up Trick Room. The ability to confuse your opponents is disgusting, and I hate it. Uh, I By formality, I have to put both of these boys in C tier, uh, and that's just because it's it's a prankster screen setter with fake out and spirit break, and this guy's Gigantamax form sucks. Just use regular. Like, technically, technically you get further along with regular most of the time. The drowsiness is not worth the Gigantamax. Um, Obstagoon, Defiant Pokemon, solid C tier pick. Can also be guts boosted. Berserker, I would put in D tier. Cursula, D tier. Surfetched, I have seen work. C tier, in my opinion. You can give it a leak and it's disgusting, or a stick, whatever it's called. I don't find this one to be incredible. Mr. Rhyme is sort of, um, sort of lame, in my opinion. Not a great Dynamax option. Doesn't get very good support moves. Not not amazing. Runarigus, another D tier. Gmax Alchemy, I think they're both kind of D tier. Phalanx, it's a, it, by virtue of purely being something that checks Incineroar, I would have to put it C tier because it gets Defiant. And it's kind of a scary Dynamax option. Pink Urchin, big ups. Big ups went from a F tier probably to a to a C tier, rising voltage and being able to set up terrain to help deal with uh, Moongus is pretty huge. Frost Smoth, you are a D tier, not very good. You are probably pretty bad actually. I haven't seen much from Stone Genre since Series One. Ice Q, I find awful. I don't know why people are even trying. These boys, you welcome to A tier. One of the best follow me Pokemon in the format. Safety Goggles is amazing. You got Expanding Force. You are B tier, just because you don't get follow me, but you are still just as scary. Um, Morpico, 
I feel like it deserves C tier. However, I know that it's probably a D tier right now. It was kind of good in the earlier formats, but not amazing right now. These two are D tier. Drake Result still functions well. Solid C tier pick. It adds hustle. It gets uh, max airstream. It gets a disgusting max um, max lightning. Uh, solid D tier here. Dracovish is probably C tier. It's not as good as it used to be, um, just because we got like Venusaur and uh, and um, what's it called Amoongus, and they kind of deal with it pretty well. You're a D tier pick. G Max Duraludon. Uh, I'm going to have to put you in C tier. It used to be better. Toekiss sort of picked up in usage even more than it did before somehow, and uh, the introduction of Cinderace kind of messes with it because now it, become a fighting type. Now, now it can become a fighting type. Uh, it can hit it hard with like just a super effective max knuckle, take a hit from it because it's Dynamax now. Excadrill deals with it really well. The Swords of Justice all Nene on it. Uh, Primarina can take a hit and knock it out with like <laughs> a disgustingly strong max fairy move. Uh, just because the thing has such a little special defense. Dragapult. I want to put it high B tier, but I know it's A tier just because how splashable it is. You can fit in a lot of teams. It's still a decent weakness policy option. Single Strike, Urshifu, Gigantamax. I am going to put this as, at like the top of C tier. Um, Water Urshifu, I will put it B tier. Maybe even C tier. They're kind of underwhelming, but just being able to deal with Tyranitar so well is a good thing to have in this format. Like, his Tyranitar can not physically protect itself without following me from these Pokemon. But yeah, uh, I would say this is... I think this is pretty solid, how I feel about the format. Let me think, is there anything here that's out of place? I don't think anything's too out of place. Uh, some people might disagree with me, but of course, this is a very opinionated list. I feel like I have a decent grasp on the format. Uh, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on the format, in fact. Um... Yeah, as you can see, most Pokemon fall within D tier. It doesn't mean they're unusable. It just means that they're not as viable as everything above it. Basically, these are the Pokemon that excel, can be put onto most teams, do amazing uh, in every match that they partake in. These are the Pokemon that are not as splashable as the ones above, but they're pretty splashable. They function well within their role, and they're probably the best at their role in the entire format. These Pokemon will function within their role. There are threats within the format uh, and are just not as splashable as those above. Uh, these Pokemon have functioned and will probably function well if you decide to try to put them on their team. They are much more niche than those above. However, uh, they do their job well. These Pokemon could work. We have not seen very many results with them. However, they will likely take a lot of tweaking to function well within the team. These Pokemon I genuinely have no hope for, and these Pokemon have particular builds that they could work well on and don't necessarily fit within any tier. However, they are most certainly not S or A tier. But yeah, uh, that's my opinion on the formats, guys. Let me know of the formats. That's my that's my opinion on the Pokemon within the format, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'd really appreciate you guys leaving a like in the video, subscribing, do whatever you want. Uh, and yeah, wish me a happy birthday. Have a nice night. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.